Welcome back to the Entrepreneur's Guide to Social Networking, how to get more customers without spending a ton of cash. My name is Greg Pittstick and I'm your host here again today. And we're gonna be covering pieces, parts. What on earth all are these parts that go into social networking and how you can use them? Now, remember I told you in the previous video, there's lots of parts. You have Facebook, Twitter, blogging, and many, many, many more of these tools. You see, they're tools. Like if I took a tool bag and dumped it out in front of you and had a, a hammer in it, had a saw in it, had a screwdriver in it, had some lumber over here, and I said, use them. You'd say, well, what should I build? And that's the first question you, the smart entrepreneur, needs to be asking is what should you build? Because what you're gonna be building is social networking marketing campaigns that work across these platforms. They're not campaigns like you used to do. It's not about you getting your name out everywhere. It's about you helping your customer and building the like, know, and trust triangle. Notice I didn't say no like and trust. I said like, know, and trust because I want you to focus on something besides yourself. So let's talk about what are all these tools and what are the capabilities they have so you can understand how to put together one of these marketing campaigns. All right. In the middle of your social networking blueprint, the very core, you're going to have your website, which is going to be based on a blogging platform. What on earth is a blogging platform and why is it at your core? What well, used to be when you had a website, when the internet was first developed, everyone took their brochures and went into a web developer and said, hey, could you put this on the web for me? Could you put this information on there? And that website was all about you and your business. It wasn't about the customer and what they wanted. And you didn't update the website. You said, great, whew, that job's done. I don't have to work on it anymore. Well, these new websites, they're updated on a regular basis. They have information that's all about the customer. They're not about you, and I'll explain that a little bit more. And they're designed in such a way that they solve a customer's problem. You see, I was over at my dad's house the other day and my brother-in-law were looking at getting some Donato's pizza. I'm a big fan of Donato's pizza. And we wanted the phone number. So we went down, booted up his ancient computer, started going to Google and trying to find the local Donato's. I saw the yellow page sitting there at my book and I, at my foot and I started to laugh. I said, geez, old Pete's right there's yellow pages, but yet we go online to try and find a local phone number. That's the way everybody is. They get online and most of them search through Google, a few search through Yahoo or MSN, but most of them are on Google looking for the information they need. And they're not looking for you. They're looking for information to solve the problem. Now let me use a story here, a true story that is. There's a local real estate agent here in Cincinnati. Her name is Jennifer Cox. Jennifer runs a website that's called everythingeastgate.com. Feel free to go there, everythingeastgate.com. She is an awesome real estate agent. She puts great information that her customers would want on her blogging platform. In fact, if you look at it, it doesn't look like a blog. It looks like a great website. She writes articles like on subdivisions, what the subdivision's like, who lives there, what the homes are like, what the feel of the community is, what the price value is, who built it. So when she has a potential buyer, let's say that lives in Des Moines, Iowa, that's looking for homes in the area, they may type in some names of some subdivisions into Google. Her articles from her website then appear in the list and the person then goes to her website to read and gain more information about that neighborhood, about those communities. And guess what? Her picture is there on the side at the bottom. She's clearly established herself as an expert. She has great offers on there and they end up calling her. And she's already an expert. She's already someone that customer is gonna to wanna to work with. So I don't care what business you're in, this is the type of site you really wanna have. So you're a remodeling company, so you're a home inspector, so you're a dentist, so you're a lawyer. These are all the types of professions that easily work into a blogging platform. Even if you're selling to other businesses, this is great. Think about your customer on the other side. Is it an engineer? Is it a purchasing manager? What information would they want? So it's not about you, it's about them and giving the information that they need to be successful. And what this is, is attraction marketing because people will go online and they'll search and they'll find your website, relevant, new, good information. And for many sites, then they could actually subscribe to it and get updates that you give over time so that they keep coming and getting the information back to them. So that's why you're gonna have your blogging platform as the middle core of your social networking strategy. If you don't have one, when you're done with your marketing plans, this is gonna to be top on your list 
to get one of these and get it updated. The other problem you're going to have, let me tell you and be upfront with it, is you are going to have to update it over time. What people were used to is put that brochure site out there once and you were done. But now with these new sites, you need to dedicate a little bit of time all along to update this. It's not hard if you just put together a marketing calendar that says every week you're going to spend a small little amount of time updating this, you can have a really great site, keep it up to date, and get a lot more business. In the next section, we're going to cover all the other sites and how they work with your blog.